All right, well, it is lunchtime, and the lunch I brought today only needs hot water added. So I thought what I would do is bring something out that um, makes it easy to boil hot water very quickly. And that is my Petromax 0.75 liter fire kettle. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this kettle, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I just want to thank the Canadian distributor for Petromax products, which unfortunately the name eludes me right now i failed to write it down on my cheat notes but i will put it across the screen when you see this video and you're going to see it of course in the video description below but they did send out the fire kettle so that i could share it with you and uh, yes it fire kettle i know it looks just like a kettle kettle or any of the other storm kettles by generic names it is very similar in many ways, but it has some unique features that make this one worth looking at. So what I'll do is reposition the camera, bring you in a little bit closer, show you this kettle in a bit of detail, and then we'll make a fire in it so I can cook my lunch. All right, just before we take a closer look at the fire kettle and talk about its key features and what makes this a little bit different from some of the others, let's take a look at what it came with. And so this is the bag that the kettle came in, a clamshell bag heavy duty ripstop nylon. There is padding inside of here for protection. So it's a much heavier bag than any of the other kettles that I've reviewed. Over heavy or over heavy duty more than it needs to be. I don't know, but there is a little bit of spare room in here that you can put a few extra things in. But let me show you what it did come with. So this is Petromax version of a pot stand that you can put on top and I won't be using it today, but I have used it. Um, so you can put another pot or kettle or pan on top of this if you want to use it just to get a little bit more versatility out of it. The other two things, and this is really all that came with it. I did bring something else I'll be sharing with. Actually, there's three other things, obviously. You gotta have a fire bowl for it. So this is the fire bowl from the bottom of the kettle. And yes, it fits up inside just like it does on all the other kettles like that. What makes this one different is the fact is that there's a stand integrated right into it. So it holds it off of the ground, the snow, the ice or whatever. That's a huge thing not to be underestimated in terms of safety and actually just functionality. I'll talk more to that in a few minutes time. So let me put that aside. And the only other two things are these, a whistling kettle uh, stopper on top. There's the whistle there, which I guess is not all that unusual. The other kettles have something similar, but they don't have this. This is a cap that actually encloses and seals the kettle. It has a silicone base inside. Let me just show you how that works so that you can carry water inside of this kettle without it fall, dripping all over the place. Now, huge caution. Let me just put this out there. I'll say it now. I'll probably say it again. Take this off before you put it on the fire because otherwise you've created a literal pressure bomb. There's no question about it. But here's what I found so useful about it. And actually I'm going to be doing it in a few minutes time is, is when I go to Streamside and I put this in the water and fill it full of water, I can then put this on carry my water back in the kettle without any risk of it dripping out. So in fact, I could put this in my backpack full of water and um, it just, you know, it, it kind of doubles up. There's, I mean, there's space in there for the water anyway. So you could use it like a water bottle, a 750 milliliter water bottle, as opposed to a water bottle and a kettle. All right, so let me just take that off. We'll bring the kettle back into the picture. I'm going to give you a few specifications for it and then we'll go through the key features. So as I mentioned, it is a 0.7 or 750 milliliter kettle. So it's not especially big in terms of volume. That's three cups of water on average. Um, it is made from stainless steel, food grade stainless steel. But of course, that the only place that you're concerned about is it touching the water is on the inside of the kettle portion itself. It stands 23.9 centimeters high. I'll put the imperial measurements in the video description below. When you have it set it up on the stove, the hobo stove or whatever you want to call it, it stands 39.1 centimeters meters high. The diameter at its largest is 13.3 centimeters and the weight is one kilogram or 2.2 pounds exactly. That's the way it weighs. Okay, so some of the things that make this different should be really obvious, right? Look at this. Handles, folding butterfly handles, heavy duty with silicone. Actually, they're quite stiff, but you don't want them loose anyway. With silicone covers on it, no more grabbing it from the top with a bale handle and a chain on the bottom to pour it off. You just pick it up and pour from it like you would any other kettle. 
that minimizes the risk that a lot of people will make when they're using a Kelly kettle or a, a ghillie kettle for the first time and haven't been in properly instructed when they lift it off the fire by the bale and burn their hands by that rocket of, of flame that's coming out of the top of it. That's a huge, that's no small thing. To me, it's actually quite a huge thing. All right, one last thing before we uh, start building the fire in it so I can make my lunch is, and that's about the diameter of the base of this. So very similar in size to the Kelly Kettle Trekker. I think it's 650 milliliters. I, I have one and I should know, but I just don't remember off the top of my head. I wanted to know if the hobo stove attachment for the Kelly Kettle would fit on top of this fire base? And the answer is no. The uh, Kelly Kettle one is too small. It drops down inside. And what that tells me is that this is larger in diameter than the Kelly Kettle one of a comparable size. I also have the base camp. The base camp was too big for this. So there is a scout model from Kelly Kettle and um, I, I might fit, but I don't have a, a scout model to try. So I'm talking about the hobo stove attachment that turns this into a small stove if you don't want to use the kettle portion on top as you normally would. So I do have something that I'll show you now that I've brought with me that allows me to use it that way. All right, so what I brought with me is my siege stove cross members. And if you take the siege stove cross members out, um, the, put them together like this, and they're, they're meant for using on cans and all kinds of other things. They actually will work on this, not perfectly. They are offset a little bit, but they will sit on like this, or actually a little bit better if I do it like this. Yeah, all right, there it is. So they actually will sit on there and you can now put a pan or a pot on top of there and feed wood into the bottom of this and use it like a hobo stove. Um, this isn't the only thing you could use. Of course, you could probably make something else yourself up with out of some stainless steel rulers or any number of things. I just wanted to point out that there are options. And the reason I'm showing you that is because to the best of my knowledge, having looked through the, the website at Petromax, they don't make a hobo stove for this. They are expensive that you're going to use that attachment to put on top of the kettle. All right, that's everything I want to show you about the stove. There's only one thing left to do is let's build a fire in it so I can get my lunch on. All right, I've got all my materials ready here on the fourth floor so that I can get my water to boil, but it occurs to me that some of you may not be aware of what a storm kettle is. So you may have heard of the Kelly kettle or the Gilly kettle. Well, this is a, exactly the same thing, and they are generically referred to as storm kettles, and sometimes referred to as rocket stoves or even rocket kettles. And what they all have in common is that there is a double walled chamber inside of this. So let me show you down inside. You can see right through that inside there is a stainless steel wall and then there's one on the outside and between the two walls is where the water resides and in this case like I said about 750 mils by the way don't fill it until you see water you want it just slightly below the top and the only reason is is because when it starts to boil it can come out quite forcefully and it can go down into your fire so uh, there's no real need to keep it with the full three cups in it you can, and especially if you put the whistle on, I suppose it'll, it'll help a little bit. But the concept of this is, is when you get a fire going in the base, as you'll see me do in a minute, that this creates a chimney. And as a result, you get a rocket stove type of effect. It just pulls air in through the bottom and up through the top. And in fact, it gets very, very intense and you'll get a lot of flame coming out of the top of this. So that's what is known as a storm kettle. Just a few more close-ups before we set it to fire. And there's the Petromax uh, FKLE75. So FK standing for fire kettle and 75 standing for 750 milliliters. So all right, let's get it on the fire. All right, I've got everything assembled that I need to boil up my water for lunch. 
a little bit of birch bark right off of the ground. I'll be putting that in. The small twigs of a dead spruce, I'm going to be putting that in. And to bring about a two cups of water to a boil, that's probably all the hardwood sticks that I'm going to need. Although I do have another branch I just haven't broken down yet. So Now, if it was windy out, and that's where these, these storm kettles really shine because the fire is not exposed, or the, you know, the gap between the fire and the kettle is not exposed to the wind. In fact, if it's windy, it's better. That's why they call them storm kettles. I would face those two ports into the wind and it would draw air in very rapidly and up through the bottom of this thing because it is a rocket stove, as you can well imagine, just like a Kelly kettle is, and it will come to a boil very, very quickly. There's no wind today. <laughs> it's an unusually calm day, so it's not going to uh, work like that. But I just wanted to show you that feature. So just start my birch bark going. Sometimes when you pick it right up off of the ground, it's a little bit slow to get started because, of course, it's a little bit wet. But as you can see, birch bark on the ground, off of the ground works just as well. It will light. Take my small twigs. In fact, I'm going to try something a little different today. I'm actually going to put the twigs up inside the kettle and then drop it on top. The only thing I'm going to do is poke it down from inside. Now, I'm going to tell you now, birch bark and spruce twigs, that's going to get really smoky for a few minutes until it takes off. But no reason to wait. I can start feeding my sticks down inside. It's going to take a second or two for that smoke to kind of burn off. And then we're going to have flames coming up, up through the top of this thing. Maybe I'll take some of the small ones off of that other branch. It's always the best practice to use the driest wood that you can. As long as you can get a fire started in this thing, and you don't have really, really dry wood, you're probably still gonna be okay because of the rocket stove effect that the chimney has in terms of igniting up wood inside. All right, I can start to see it catching on. It's still a little bit in the early phases. Don't take long though. And I just wanna point out I took the cap off. I had it on over at the stream side, but I took the cap off. Please remember to take that cap off before you put it on top of the uh, stove itself. I could put the whistling one on, but I don't feel the need to. I'm gonna leave the whistling one off. I'm sitting right here watching. Here we go. Now we're starting to clean up a little bit. Some of the pieces of wood I dropped in were a little on the larger size, so... I may not even have to put any more wood in before this is full. Or burning, or boiling, I should say. In fact, I think I'll hold off for a second. I'm seeing flame, hopefully that's showing on the camera. There is flame coming up above the top of the stove or above the uh, chimney. Drop a few more down inside. There we go, look at the flame coming up now. I'm letting this run in real time. If you want, you can fast forward through this, but I just wanted to show you how quickly you can bring your water to a boil. And it's gonna be ready before my lunch is. Might as well get that out. My bowl. My meal, which is a dehydrated prepared meal. Homemade one that is. I'll probably do a video on it at some point.
The, wet, the water is almost to a boil, believe it or not. The whole kettle is kind of rocking a little bit as the water comes to a boil. There's the steam coming out. And there it is, it's boiling. Smoking hot. See, I can grab over, reach onto the kettle, carry it off. There's still fire in the base. I'll just put this here so you can see me making my lunch. And it should go without saying, as with any other storm kettle, don't put it back on top of the stove, on top of the flame, unless there's water in the kettle. If you do that, you're just asking to burn the inside of it out or risk damaging it through warping. You're safe as long as you have water inside. And there's enough hot water there, I can probably make myself some coffee after lunch. All right, my lunch has got to rehydrate. You can see I've got a little bit of wood left over. It didn't take all the sticks that I put in it. That's how efficient these things are. But what I'll do now is give my lunch a chance to rehydrate, enjoy it, and then I'll come back and give you some few closing thoughts. All right, we're gonna close this video up with just a few more thoughts on the Petromax fire kettle. So uh, what makes this one different than all the others? What makes this one better? I don't know that it's necessarily better. It has some features that I definitely like better. Uh, it is a little bit heavier. I believe the, the grade of stainless steel is heavier, if that's important to you. Uh, the craftsmanship seems spot on perfect. I don't see anywhere where there has been a miss uh, in the construction of it. But what makes it a little bit different in my mind, of course, are the handles on the side. No more bale and chain on the bottom to keep the cork. Uh, that's not a small thing, as I mentioned. The fact that you can put a cap on this and keep water inside of it, as well as put a whistle on, of course, but the cap is what one of the things that makes this different just makes it so that you can transport water in it again no small thing and i guess also once the water has come to a boil and you take it off of the heat you could put that cap on and your water is going to stay warm for quite a while inside of this it does hold heat due to that heavy gauge stainless steel uh, inside here um, the other thing is, and I did kind of refer to this, but I didn't say why I thought it was important, is that this has a larger diameter base than the Kelly Kettle Trekker. I don't know this for sure, but my experience has been so far that this creates a much more intense fire faster than the Kelly Kettle. And I think it's because the fire bowl is bigger, that this bottom diameter is bigger, but it narrows off quicker, giving you uh, more area for flame and fuel to sit inside of this, more surface area on the inside of the kettle area so that it will, the heat will uh, distribute itself around and heat the water up faster. I guess that would be the simplest way to explain it. So yeah, do I like this? Love it, actually. This is now my preferred storm kettle for taking out with me. So as always, I'll be putting the links to where you can take another look at this, both at the Canadian distributor, as well as Petromax in the video description below. All the specifications, metric and imperial, will be in this, the video description below. But I'd invite you, if you have any comments or questions regarding the Petromax fire kettle, then please put those in the comments section below. But until next time, Get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.